Hey guys, we are in the basement and today, yesterday guys, on this episode of John's Arcade. Well guys, this is part number one of our Belly Radical LED install video series. That's right guys, we are putting LEDs in our 1990 Bally Radical. And by the way, check this out. The, the basement's looking so good now. <laughs> I just love this pinball machine, guys. I, I truly do. I, I've been playing it quite a bit the last few nights and it's so much fun. And of course, we have Crazy Climber down here now where Pac-Man used to be. Pac-Man now is next to the Golden Tee. I just love the layout down here. Anyway, let's talk about this. So LEDs, you know, I've been pretty resistant to the idea of putting LEDs in my pins for some time. And, and I know throughout the years, I've had comments on the channel here. You know, like, hey, John, you really should put LEDs in your Whirlwind, or John, you should put LEDs in your NBA Fast Break. And for whatever reason, I just kind of dismiss those comments. Maybe, maybe it's the purest of me, I have no idea. But you know, I've been going to these pinball shows, I've been seeing people's games from the 80s and 90s with LEDs, and I gotta say, some of them out there look amazing. It really makes the older games pop. It makes them look more modern. It makes it so you can see everything more clearly because really, that's a pretty dark game. That game is very dark when you compare it like to my Ghostbusters and the newer Stern pinball machines that all have the LEDs you know, from the factory. But also on the flip side of all this too, I've seen some really bad, like seriously bad LED jobs where people just go overboard with the colors, uh, especially like colored GI and putting colored bulbs in the back, back box. I I've seen some really horrific, uh, like just LED jobs. So in this video series, we're gonna try to tastefully LED this machine and not make it look too gaudy and ugly. <laughs> so, so let me show you what I picked up, okay? Okay, so in this video, we're gonna focus solely on the GI, the general illumination. And here's the, the bulbs I've ordered so far. Actually, I placed two orders. I placed an order of Comet Pinball uh, for the GI bulbs, which we see right here. And also I placed an order of Coin Taker. Um, and I, that order of Coin Taker is mostly the colored insert bulbs and some of the other non-ghosting bulbs. Now, these are not non-ghosting bulbs. These are just straight up two SMDs, which is surface-mounted diodes. Now, the reason I ordered these bulbs for the GI is because this is what Stern uses in their new pinball machines. And I really like how my Ghostbusters looks. And, and these right here, uh, the two SMD, clear lens, natural white. This is actually what's in all the new Stern pinball machines. So I ordered a bag of those, we have 25 of those. And then I also ordered the clear lens sunlight. The, we're gonna actually use these, I think, for most of the GI. The sunlight is not as harsh of a white because the clear natural white is, is kind of a bluey white, right? It's Because the incandescent bulbs, they really kind of glow like a yellowy amber white color. And I think the sunlight is gonna be a little bit closer to that, but we're still gonna get some of that kind of cool LED. They also have warm white. So there's basically sunlight, natural white, and then warm white. And so the sunlight's gonna be kind of in the middle in between those. So I think we're gonna use these for most of the GI. And then I ordered some frosted sunlight, just we have some options. The frosted will diffuse the light better, whereas the clear doesn't. But you know what, I, I really do want this game to be bright. I want it to be kind of more like my Ghostbusters. So I'm gonna try to use as many of the clears as possible. And then we can decide if we wanna change them or not. Now I didn't get any colored bulbs, because we're not gonna use any colored anything for the GI. I think it looks cheesy. Um, and then also I have frosted natural white. We're gonna use these in the back box. Uh, again, the frosted diffused the light a little bit better than the clear. And I think the kind of natural white, the bluey white is gonna look really good with the back glass art. Um, and then I ordered these. Actually, uh, Lojack on the John's Arcade forum suggested these in the slingshots. Uh, these are eight SMD low profile uh, bulbs. And they have actually four SMDs on the top and then four on the sides shooting out. And I think this is gonna really brighten up the area around the slingshots and the flippers, which I want to do. So I guess we'll kind of get right into it. And actually, I'll give you guys a quick little update on the pinball machine since the last video, because I actually fixed all the stuff that was wrong with it that we discovered. Um, I did replace that one switch that was broken. And you can see here, this is how it looked. Uh, and this is the wire form where the ball rolls over and it just had a clean break here. So I went on Marco Special, uh, actually I got this from a Steve Young Pinball Resource. I ordered a new switch and I actually didn't replace the entire switch. I just popped off 
the little wire form and then put it on the other one, uh, on the old one, so I didn't have to do any soldering. And then I, I saved the switch that came with this and I put it in the, in the coin box. So if the switch ever goes bad or any switch goes bad, I have an extra switch. And then I, I did replace the pinballs. I use these Silver Jets. Uh, these are high precision pinballs. These are kind of pricey, but I always put these in all my games. You cannot use these in the games that have magnets though. And I remember trying these in my Theater of Magic and these balls will get magnetized and start sticking to stuff in the tr ex especially in the trough. They will stay in the trough. <laughs> and then I did clean the play field a little bit with some Novus too. I haven't waxed it yet. I'll probably do that later, but the, the play field looks pretty good. And then over here, uh, the gate was missing that little wire form right there, and I ordered that from Marco. See that little wire? Because what was happening was I'd launch the ball, and it would go back into the, uh, into the shooter lane, which is bad. And then that switch over here was replaced. So the game's now 1,000%, and it plays amazing. So anyway, let's get to work here. I think we're going to do the back glass first, and uh, I'm going to turn the light off here. You guys can kind of see how it looks now. And... It, I mean, it doesn't look bad, but it's just, the artwork's not really popping, and I'm really hoping that once we put the LEDs in there, it's going to really pop. And you can see we have lots of blues, so we'll be using the cold, the, the natural whites near the top. Um, we do have some of the uh, sunlight ones that we can use in more of the yellow areas, maybe. We'll kind of play around with this. And then we also have these one, two, three, four, five, six little things that light up. Now I think these I'm gonna replace with non-ghosting uh, yellow LEDs that I ordered from Coin Taker. So we might not replace those, or we could try the warm white in there or the sunlight and see how that looks. But you can see how these are, these all kind of light up showing you kind of the progress of the game. So I don't know, it looks pretty cool. So why don't I kind of pull the game back here and we'll just kind of get to work. Okay, I pulled the game back, and uh, let's remove the back glass here. Okay, so here's all of our bulbs. And I think I'll reference the back glass as we're doing this, or we might just replace them all with uh, the, the cool white and then take a look at it. Now, I'm not going to be replacing any of the flasher bulbs. I, I pretty much made that decision that we're not going to replace any of the flashers with LEDs. Um, a lot of people say there's just no reason to do that and they're very expensive. So we'll see how this all looks when we're done, and we'll make a decision later if we want to replace the flashers. Actually, you guys tell me, what's your experience with this? Do you guys like replacing the flashers with LED flashers? I don't know. We'll see. For now, we're going to leave it alone. So let's turn the game off. It's probably best to do this with the game off. I, I, I do personally think it's kind of low risk to do it with the game on, but to be safe, we don't want to short anything out. A lot of these sockets have diodes on them. It's probably just a good idea to turn it off, and then we'll turn it back on when we want to do checks. So, okay, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to start with, I want the frosted, I want the frosted cool white. Here we are. All right, so these are the two SMD frosted natural white. And, and by the way, I did not get non-ghosting LEDs for the GI because I don't think it's going to be a problem. If we have a problem with some, and, and by the way, the ghosting and the flickering and all that kind of stuff people talk about, what happens is um, that when the game turns the bulb off, there's still like some power in the circuit, and so the LED doesn't completely turn off. Whereas with an incandescent bulb, it will completely turn off. The LED is sensing that extra voltage that's still in the circuit, and, and so it stays lit. Now, people have created like ROM updates to get rid of this. Uh, there's a guy that made this OCD, or OC, LED OCD board or something, and they also have non-ghosting LEDs. I do think that the non-ghostings are really more critical for inserts and, and kind of game-controlled lamps, but lamps that are just on all the time, like all these back glass lights here, I don't think it's necessary to use non-ghosting and, and you're also spending a lot of money. But there's gonna be some GI on the play field that is clearly controlled by the computer because it will dim or, or go out and we might, we'll take a look at that after we replace them and make a decision if we wanna replace some of them with non-ghosting if we have problem areas. But initially here, I'm gonna use non-ghosting in all of the uh, GI areas. Okay, so I'm gonna open this up right here. And again, these are the two SMD, uh, 44s, uh, frosted lens, natural white. And we're just gonna kinda go in there and just start changing them all. And I hope I have enough. I think I have 25 or something for up here. So I'm just gonna start yanking all these bulbs. And then we'll just start, we'll pop in. So 
pretty simple. And again, I'm using the frosted in the back glass because I kind of want that to be diffused. I don't want there to kind of be like spotlights. So pretty simple. Back glass is easy. Playfield's not going to be easy. <laughs> you know, I was looking at like the pop bumpers and uh, I'm going to have to remove the ramps to get to them. So that's not going to be fun. Boy, I hope I ordered enough bulbs. All right, let's keep going here. I'm worried I didn't order enough of these bulbs. There really is a ton of bulbs back here, so I'm gonna keep going here. I'm gonna replace all these and we'll come back. Okay, uh, I actually ran out of the uh, frosted uh, natural light. I think we're gonna make do with this though. I, I don't know what I was thinking. I, I ordered only 25 and I clearly need more. But if we look at the artwork here, like I wanna maybe use the sunlight over here like on his face, okay? And I think maybe down here would look good. If you look at the artwork, like this area here has kind of a sunset. So why don't we just kind of make lemonade here and maybe like his face, I'll use the frosted sunlight. And then we'll move some of these cool ones over here. So this is cool. All right, so this whole, so the logo is gonna be all cool, right? And then let's try using the warm. I gotta kinda keep track of this here. So I'm looking at the artwork right now. So his face is like right here and here. So that's a frosted sunlight, which is gonna be a little bit warmer. Okay, so that's the guy's face. And then, and then down in here, it's pretty much that kind of sunset. And we, we'll move these around if we don't like it. And by the way, I decided against ordering a kit because I kind of wanted to play around with this myself. And if it turns out I don't have enough of a certain LED, I will order them. And we'll, we'll visit that in part number two. Okay, and then I have a decision to make about these little insert lights. God, those are really in there. We might have to change those from the rear. Okay, so you guys ready? Should we, should we see how this looks? Let's put the back glass on. Alright, so let's turn it on. I'll turn the light off. And let's get a good camera angle here. Alright, here we go. <laughs> So, how does this look? Oh yeah, holy cow that pops. Oh, that looks great. Oh yeah. Like, I like how this feels. This is really warm in here. It's a little colder over here. I think I, think I want her to have the, uh, the warm. She's a little bit too harsh here. There's some blues behind her. I think she'll benefit from the warm. I think this area down, I want warm. And I think the, oh, look at that. See that, they were just flashing there. Let's actually take a look at that. So, and you can kind of see how the warm look over here. So I think that all of these are gonna be warm. And then we'll keep the top that. So let's replace the, the ones in this area. All right, so these are all cool. So let's replace these with warm. Oh, 
And I have to keep track of those. All right. Okay, so let's, and I guess why we're in here, let's take a look and see if we can get this whole, if there's an easy way. Yeah, I think what I want to do is pull this board off. Now I'm wondering right now though, do I want to put in LEDs here? I don't think I do. Let's wait on that, because I ordered those um, yellow non-ghosty ones for here. We'll maybe do that in the next video, but let's see how this looks now. All right, let's turn the light off. Oh yeah, that sings, guys. Oh my God, that looks so much better. So yeah, I think the warm down here, and then as, as the sunset turns blue and the logo's all blue, this looks fantastic. It feels so great. And then right here, we're gonna have to make a decision about that. We're gonna wait on that. I'll do that in the next video when I get those non-ghosting. Okay, so I guess we'll move on to the play field now. What a difference that has made already. Just, that looks so tasteful and good. <laughs> Do you guys see this? Look at that. Oh my God. All right, let's move on to the play field. All right, I have the, the, uh, the glass off here. So let's remove the balls, okay? And we're gonna be replacing the LEDs from the top and the bottom. And I guess we'll just kind of start down here, okay? Uh, in the slingshot area. And so we've got two bulbs here, okay? And then these owl lanes, there's, there's two right here. Now, this is where I'm thinking about using these eight SMDs. And we'll see how this looks. If, if, if it's too much, we'll reverse it. Um, but I would like to, to do this experiment. So let's kind of lift this up here. And we're gonna replace them from underneath. And I'm gonna turn the pinball machine off in a second here. So let's turn it off. And I'm gonna use a quarter inch nut driver here because it's easier for me to get to the bulbs down here by just removing one nut per socket instead of removing like four screws and a plastic that's really kind of tucked in there. All right, so here's the bulb. So let's get the eight SMDs. I, I've ordered, I ordered six of these, so we could play around with these in various spots. So let's pop that in there. And then let's go ahead and just screw this back in. So these are super bright, so I'm hoping that it doesn't blow out the plastic, the artwork on the plastic, we'll see. Now, I've never done this before, so we're all kind of learning together in this video what works and what doesn't, so, but I do want to experiment. Oh my God, all right. Okay, so there's that one. And that's actually in the out lane, that one we just replaced. And let's do the other outlane bulb, which is right here. Because I really want to brighten the area around the flippers and the slingshots, because it's very, very dark on this game. So let's go ahead and put this in here. And again, if I don't like it, if it's too much, we'll, we'll reverse it. Nothing's permanent that we're doing here. 
one. Okay, so that's the that's this uh, outlane right here. And then let's do the slingshots now. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and do the slingshots by myself, but basically I'm just unscrewing the socket from underneath and putting a new bulb in. So I'll do that real quick and come back. Okay, so I replaced all those LEDs. Um, not too bad, a little annoying in spots, kind of tight. But let's take a look at how that looks. So let's review to what we did. So basically I replaced the slingshots, okay? So two here, two here with those eight SMDs, and then also the two that are in this lane right here. There is none over on this side. So that's gonna really illuminate this whole entire area. So let's, let's turn off the light and let's turn it on, turn on the game and see how this looks. Oh yeah. That's not harsh at all. And it's not blowing out these plastics, the colors. Yeah, I, I totally dig that. We're running with that. Absolutely. Now a lot of people are sensitive to the LEDs and you look at them from like the side. I'm not. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, that looks great. It really lights up this whole area. And see, you can see there the computer's controlling those, making them blink, and those LEDs had no problem keeping up with that. All right, so already I'm feeling like things are looking brighter here. Um, so that really helped illuminate this whole lower area. And let's take a look at it. I don't know if you guys can tell in the camera. So what do you think? And it's not blowing out the plastic at all. I was worried that the four SMDs on the top would blow out the artwork. It's not doing that. And it's pushing the light to the sides. So all of this is really well lit. Yeah, that looks really sharp. I, I like it. We're running with it. All right, let's keep going. I actually... Now, those were actually cool, weren't they? Were those sunlight? Let me see. Uh, those are the natural white, so they're a little bluer, which matches this blue artwork, so I'm okay with that. Back in here, we're going to use the sunlight, and, and the artwork in here is all yellow, so it's going to kind of warm all that up. All right, so let's keep going. Um, next area we want to attack, we're going to do right here. And we've got a bulb here, a bulb here that's burnt out. So we got two bulbs here, and I'm going to use the clear uh, sunlight on those. So let's go for these right here. And then in here, there's some. So let's turn the game off and just kind of get to work in this area now. So this isn't hard, and it's instant gratification, which is awesome. All right, so this right here, these are two insert lights, so we're not gonna change those. All right, so that I changed. So in here, all right, so we've got one right here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead now and change these, and these ones I'm gonna use the clear sunlight two SMDs. But basically, I'm just taking my tool here, I'm removing the socket from underneath, which is a lot simpler than removing all the plastics on the top. And I'm changing the bulb and I'm moving on. So let's go ahead and change this. We'll do this one together and then I'll, I'll do the rest alone. I mean, this is, this is rinse and repeat here. All right. And then let's get a clear sunlight, which we have not opened yet. And we'll stick this guy in here. And then we'll screw it on. Now some people, you know, like in, if, if a section of the artwork is all purple, they'll use purple GI. I, I just, I don't like that. I, I think it darkens the game, it muddies the games, it just made, that makes it look bad. I mean, the original manufacturer was using the same colored bulbs for everything. Now on the inserts, I think that's kind of a little bit of a different story because you're projecting basically a colored light through a colored lens and it just kind of emphasizes the color that much more Whereas the blueness of the white LEDs will kind of alter that color. All right, so that one, uh, these are tough to find. 
That's those are five five fives. Uh, okay, I don't have any five five fives yet. So this whole thing here is five five fives. All right, so we got some bulbs over here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and change some more bulbs and we'll come back and check it out. All right, guys, I, I mean, I basically all I'm doing right now is I'm just going through here and every time I see this, this socket that's not on an insert, I change it. And so far I've changed like um, a couple over here. I just changed those two and I'm just basically going socket to socket to socket to socket. And uh, I'm just gonna keep going <laughs> and we'll check back in in a little bit. Okay, um, I changed a bunch here. I'm actually, I'm actually starting to lose track, like which ones I changed and which ones I haven't changed. So I kind of want to just turn it on right now and let's kind of just take inventory of what we've done and we haven't. Oh boy! Wow, man, that really transformed the game. <laughs> Holy cow! Just doing the GI. I mean, it's it's like brand new. Oh my god! Wow. Okay, so we gotta do the GI in this corner back here. And I gotta do this slingshot right there. So we're almost done here. I think I just need to do here and here. And then the rest of the bulbs, um, that one's not on right there. What's up with that? I, I could see right here. Why is that not on? So there's one right here that should be lit, and it's not. So what's the deal with that one? It's right behind these two switches. Huh. I wonder if I should get my multimeter. Okay, so we have something bad going on right there. That's not lit. Um, I'm gonna get my multimeter here, hang on. All right, I'm gonna take my multimeter here and I'm gonna try to figure out why this one is not lighting up and I'm wondering if we have a bad socket or what. I just wanna see if the voltage is present here. I'm gonna put my meter on DC volts and I'll tell you guys what I see here. Um, but it was this one right here. This is not lit. Yeah, I have no voltage there. But if I compare it to the one next to it. Hang on. Is it AC? Yeah, it is. All right, it's... So it's 5.2 volts right here. And then let's go over here, 5.2 volts. So I wonder if I have a bad socket or did I put a bad bulb in there? So let's, let's take that off and uh, we're getting voltage here, but the bulb is not lighting up. We have a cold solder joint. All right, so let's, we'll try a different bulb right now. Or is this socket? All right, let's turn it on now. All right, now it works. Hmm, maybe we had a bad bulb, I don't know. So, <laughs> that scared me. All right, I'm gonna screw this back in here. Um, Let me put this back in and then we'll continue on. All right, let's turn it back on and make sure. All right, so now that's lit. Okay, so I wanna again take inventory looking for the balls um so i need to change 
here and back in that corner and then we're about done. So let's go right over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and change those and I'll come back. I'm gonna turn it off before I do it. All right guys, um, I think I'm done. I'm gonna tell you, some of these are really a bear to get to. <laughs> so um, let's lower the play field. I wanna turn the game on. I, I need to just double check and make sure I didn't miss any. I, I think I might have, but we'll see. Um, it absolutely has transformed the game though. I mean, the game is so bright and, and I don't feel like anything is blinding me at all. I actually very much like this. Um, so let's take a look around. I just want to make sure I didn't miss any of the incandescence in the GI. Um, I think actually putting the play field up is going to reveal a little bit more. Let's see. So I want to look in the bottom here. I'm, what's that? Is that an incandescent right there? I think I missed one right here. Yeah, I did. I missed one right here. Okay. I can see that that light is just um, more yellow. So I clearly missed one right here. So let's do that one real quick. Um, you know, this is not hard at all. You know, anyone could do this. It's just time consuming and awkward in places. Where, where was that one? Let's turn this back on. So it's right here. I missed that one. And looking on the bottom here. So yeah, I think I only have one more to do. I'm just looking all around. So I haven't changed any flashers and we haven't changed any of the inserts. And we're gonna do that in the next video because I don't have the bulbs yet. So it looks like I just have one left to do and it's that one right there. So why don't we do the last one together? And it's right here. Now this one is easy to get to. <laughs> the ones on the bottom, oh my God. They were so hard and awkward and it's hot down here. I was, I was kind of miserable to be honest. So <laughs> just be prepared uh, to be frustrated at times. And I recommend um, getting a magnetic nut driver. Um, I do not have one. And some of those screws are in really bad spots. And it would be great if this was magnetized and I could just kind of, you know, lead the, the tool to the hole. Like right there, I just dropped it. Like I dropped these screws over and over and over and over again. Cause they're just like, they're tight, there's wires, it's, it's a mess. Okay. All right, let's let's take a look now again. Let's make sure that one works. It does. I think I got them all now. All right, let's take a look, guys. What do you think? It completely transformed the game. I mean, it's, it's like not even the same game. What a difference that made. And that's only the GI. Imagine when we do all the inserts. Um, just kind of looking around here. So that snake pit looks good. So the snake pit has one LED over here. Um, now on the pop caps, we're gonna, the pop bumpers, we're gonna use a a special kit. Oh, I missed a bulb right here. All right, I missed one on the other side too, behind that flipper. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and change this one real fast and I'll come back. Okay, I changed that bulb. I think I have gotten all of them now and I'm in love with what I'm seeing. I, I don't know if you guys can see what I see. <laughs> what do you guys think? Do you like it? Would you have done some things differently? I don't know. I, I, I feel good about all of my choices. I mean, 
Lojack said to use these back here. I mean, that looks fantastic. On those slings and over here. It really lights this whole area up. Because um, this was a very, very dark area before. So some of the bulbs, you know, if you stare... Even the Ghostbusters has this problem, though. You know, if you stare directly at them, you might get blinded for a second, you know. But it's not so bright that it's that obnoxious. Everything looks great. Oh, man, I love it. I cannot wait to do the inserts. And, of course, the back glass. Looks like a brand new back glass. All right, well, I think I'm going to put the glass back on. Let's push the pinball back in. You guys want to hang out and do some viewer mail? This is going to do it for part number one. I mean, I cannot wait till we finish this in the next video. I, I just think it looks fantastic. <laughs> All right, let me put it back together here. Maybe we'll play a quick game and then do some viewer mail. What do you guys think? Let's hang out for a little bit. All right, I guess we'll just play a, a really quick game here. Whoa, that's like totally bad. So I'm wondering if I want to do the flashers. Oh my god. Plunge drain. <laughs> well, that was bad. You know, there's supposed to be a way to plunge the ball up that ramp, and I don't know what... If it's a certain feel or what. I cannot wait to get the other ones changed out. So everything seems to be working fine. I'm not seeing any ghosting or flickering. Everything's turning on and off. It's kind of cool though because when those lights go off, it's dark. <laughs> I kind of want to get the flashers, I think. What do you guys think? Did I miss a bulb in the snake run? No, I did. John sucks at pinball. All right. I want to try to get that. On the skill shot, you're supposed to be able to go up the ramp there, and it does not look possible the way the geometry is. And nothing looks like it's wrong or out of whack. Well, that's like totally guys, guys, this these these LEDs have transformed this game. <laughs> this is like a whole other game. I cannot wait to get the ones on the inserts. Yeah, I kind of want the LED flashers. Ah, oh, kickback. Saved it. No. Bummer, man. Well, that's cool. Listen, what I see right here looks pretty darn good. <laughs> I feel like we've transformed this game and we're only half done. So, all right, why don't we, uh, you guys want to do some viewer mail and hang out? Let me go print some real quick and we'll sit at the table here. But I think this was a massive success. Like, I, I just love it. I love everything about it. It's like a brand new game. All right, guys, let's go sit at the table here and do some viewer mail. All right, guys, let's come over here and do some viewer mail. So what'd you guys think, huh? Did I do okay? Does it look good? Would you have done things differently? Leave comments below. Now, now listen, there's a lot of benefits to what we did here in this video, right? 
Um, the game's gonna run cooler, okay? It's gonna use it, it, less power, okay? Which is gonna really help on the connectors. Cause on these pinball machines, one of the biggest problems is those connectors all burn up. So this is gonna really pull some of that amperage off of those and just kind of relieve a lot of stress. Cause these LEDs draw so much less current than, than incandescent bulb. And then also I wanna thank some guys and give some shout outs, you know, cause I talked to a bunch of people before I did this, like Lojack uh, on the John's Arcade form. He recommended I use those bulbs in the slingshot. So thank you. And also uh, Joe Brewer from, uh, from Brewer's Arcade. What happened here? <laughs> he has a video uh, where he LED'd a, a, a getaway. And I watched that video and, and I messaged him. I'm like, Joe, I love your video. I like a lot of the, the decisions that you made because he used also the clear 2SMD sunlight bulbs. And I really thought his getaway looked very good. So go check out his video and his channel at Brewer's Arcade. And Joe, thanks. I, I sent him some messages on Twitter. Great guy too. So follow him on Twitter as well. Uh, but anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Why don't we do some viewer mail? Um, if you guys want to participate in the viewer mail, you got to email them to me at john at johnsarcade.com. And by the way, we'll be doing part number two very soon. I'm just waiting for those bulbs to come in. And uh, I'm wondering if I need to order more stuff. Again, should I do the flashers? What do you guys think? Would you do the flashers? So I, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, all right. Anyway, John at johnsarcade.com. If you want to participate in the viewer mail, john at johnsarcade.com. Can be a question, a comment, whatever. Uh, this one's from Adam. Hi, John. I'm a longtime fan of your YouTube channel. I actually just bought an old marquee on eBay, and I'm not really sure what it is. So I figured I'd reach out and ask you. I was wondering if it's a marquee for the prototype of Akari Warriors, Warriors, or is it a less exciting marquee from a copycat or ripoff of the game? Here are pictures. So I'll share the pictures right here. Okay, well, listen, you know, my first instinct is that these are bootleg marquees all day long. That looks like a bootleg. I've seen a gazillion artwork styles like that of fake games. So I'm going to call that a bootleg. If you guys disagree, leave a comment below. But that sure looks like a bootleg to me, and it's ugly. <laughs> but it's fun wall art. <laughs> so, all right, let's move on. Um, let's see here. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, this one's from Craig. Um, hey, John, I had a quick question and comment. Uh, the first video game I ever played was called Space Panic in 81. Ever played this game or, more importantly, seen one for sale? If so, what do you think of the game and what it might be worth? Uh, now, Space Panic, uh, this... I think someone has emailed me this same exact question like a couple years ago. It's kind of like Load Runner, right? And it's also on the 60 and 1 board, I believe. So yes, I remember Space Panic. I seem to remember playing it like on ColecoVision or maybe my Atari 800. I've never seen one for sale, but that would be a game that would definitely pique my interest if I saw one for sale. I have no idea what it's worth. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's a very uncommon game. I don't know if, if it's on a lot of people's radar, though. I, I, I don't know. I have no idea. I'd be guessing. You know, a dedicated Space Panic. What does that even look like? Um, actually, I'm going to go Google right now. I'm going to find an image. If I, if I find it, I'm going to play it right now. So if I did find an image in post, it's, it's, it's showing up right now. And, and does it look cool? <laughs> uh, anyway, he goes on. My comment is, I think I heard you say once that Crazy Kong was an East Coast game. I wanted to let you know there was definitely one at the local liquor store here in Southern California that I used to play before I even heard of Donkey Kong. That would have been 81 and 82. If I remember correctly, uh, it replaced the above-mentioned Space Panic. Remember that terrible feeling when you would walk into a 7-Eleven, pizza place, etc., and your favorite game had been removed or replaced? No! Thanks for all you do, Craig. God, I feel like we've read this email before. This, this email he just sent, like, yesterday. <laughs> Did we read this email? Did he, did, he, did he send the same exact email before? Um, yes, I remember though, like 7-Eleven or whatever, they would have a game that you loved and you would go there every day to play it and all of a sudden it was gone. You know, I, I remember like Dragon's Lair and Donkey Kong Jr. I remember these games disappearing from 7-Eleven. Um, now, Crazy Kong, I do believe though, when I was referencing saying it was East Coast game, that white cabinet with the pink, the pink artwork, that, I believe, in, is an East Coast game. There was a company in Rhode Island that made that. Now, I do believe that those boards the, were getting all over the country and people were making their own bootleg cabinets. And that's what was happening in Rhode Island. Is a, a company in Rhode Island was making their own version of Crazy Kong. They were getting the boards from Europe or wherever, and then they were making dedicated Crazy Kongs that were white with pink artwork, and that's the one I want. And there's also, like, Kongorilla and 
Crazy Kong 2 or something, or Monkey Kong. There's like a gazillion versions of that with all these operators and distributors making up their own artwork. So when I said it was East Coast game, I was mostly talking about that white cabinet with the pink artwork, which is the Crazy Kong I want and will have someday. I've been this close to getting one. So, so anyway, you know, I printed a third viewer mail here and uh, apparently my printer freaked out. So I guess that's it for this video. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you want to see part number two of this. I cannot wait till we do that. And if you guys have any recommendations or comments about what we did, what we did today in the video, uh, leave them below so I can read them before part number two. We're all getting smarter here together, right? So. But I feel pretty good about this. What I see here, I like. I like a lot. It's very well lit up. So, And my game's running cooler and all that. And again, thanks to Lojack and Joe Brewer and, and everyone else I talked to about this, trying to get advice, because I, I was uh, asking a lot of questions. Because I was a little unclear, because there's so many choices, and I feel like I made good choices here. I like it. And I'm not seeing any flickering or, or ghosting on the GI at all. So cannot wait to do those inserts so anyway we'll do that very soon be sure to check out my podcast video game outsiders at videogameoutsiders.com we do that show live every tuesday we're actually on a comedy network called riot cast if you go to riotcast.com you can learn all about it you know jim norton's there and uh jim florentine nick DiPaolo, etc robert kelly and us um and anyway we do the show live tuesdays at 9 p.m eastern go to videogameoutsiders.com or rightcast.com to listen live and then anytime during the week you can listen on our app uh if you go to the ios store or google play search for video game outsiders the app is completely free and just download it and you can listen to all the latest podcasts on there and there's also bonus content that's optional it's a dollar 99 a month to get those extra 12 episodes a month in including the john show with john and michelle's show and we also do a rather meaty blank outsiders which is a different topic every week so anyway that's it i'll see you guys very soon thanks for watching and all that good stuff later and bye <laughs>